This is exercise 3 on chapter 3, which is elements uh, of the book, Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering. Uh, we're going to get this question. Uh, we can use this approach, this stoichiometric table approach, to get the limiting reactant. So having set up this stoichiometric table in example 3, 2, which is this one, this table is the one they are talking about, one can now readily use it to calculate the concentrations at any given conversion. So, of course, if they, I give you conversion, I can get the concentration of A at any moment, the concentration of B at any moment, the concentration of C at any moment, and the concentration of D at any moment. If the initial mixture consists of only sodium hydroxide at this concentration, so C, or initial concentration of A, is this value, and the one of glyceryl steroid, which is the one of B, is 2. Uh, what is the concentration of glycerin when the conversion of sodium hydroxide is A, 20% and B, 90%? So as you can see, first things first, I got the concentrations of my reactants. Uh, the concentration of my products are zero. Why zero? Because they tell you that there are, where is it? consists solely of this and this. So you just got this. By definition, they are zero. So calculate the H circle function of B, which is initial concentration of A, no, of B, divided by A. We got this is two from here, this two and this 10. So we got this point two. And well, if you were to calculate the concentration of C and concentration of D here, you will see that because this value here is zero, they are zero. So hopefully you get that this is zero and this is zero, so anything that divides uh, zero divided by something, it's zero. Okay, now let's actually use the problem. Uh, let me go, I'm going to use these equations, so don't at last. 20% conversion. Let's calculate the one of C. These two are products and this is my reactant. So when we got 20% we got that the initial conversion times this value here. Initial concentration of A is 10. This H function is 0 and X is 20% or 0.2 in fraction. So of course you're going to get two moles of C. We do the same for D, this 10 times 0 because we have no initial concentration of D, and one third due to the uh, stoichiometric values times 0.2, you get this. And not only that, we are going to calculate this here, 10 times the initial, or the amount of B which is accounted here, minus the one that are reacted. Of course we are expecting that it will lower. So. If we used to have 2, we're going to have 1.33. And if we used to have 0 of C, we're going to have 2. And we used to have 0 of D, we are going to have 0.66. So that's our final values. Of course, if you wanted to calculate the amount of concentration of A, will be, you need to check this out. Concentration of A is, was 10. 1 minus 0 0.2 will give you 8. Makes sense because I disappear two moles of A and they turn out to be C. Nice. And that's letter A. Letter B is exactly the same, but we're going to apply 90%. And one thing I want to show you here is that, yeah, just do it for the sport of doing it. 10 times 0 once again, and the conversion is 0.9. It makes sense that if you have 10 moles and you react 90% of that, you're going to have 9 moles of C and yeah, you are going to get left with 1 mole of uh, A. Now do it for D, you get 3, which is, makes sense. You know that for every 3 points you got this one. And one tricky part here is this concentration B, you're going to get this negative 1. And probably you know you cannot have negative concentration, so this Either you got a mathematical error or you are achieving a conversion that you cannot achieve because you do not have enough material. And this is the case because you only have 
0.2 moles of B and to get 90% you will need to have at least 0.3 moles of B. So you are telling me or they are telling us that you are getting this 90% conversion but this cannot be possible because you need more material and you don't have it. You have only 0.2 and for this 90% you need at least 0.3. So the limiting reactant was in this case B and that's why guys I tell you that you need to be sure of what is the limiting reactant so this doesn't happen. You, for example, they tell us in the previous problem to use hydroxide, uh, sodium hydroxide as our let's say A here but the truth is that we should have chosen this value here because this was our limiting reactant and if we don't want to get these negative values well either choose the limiting reactant or don't give us an impossible conversions because this is impossible you cannot get this with so little amount of B, of B here so hopefully you get the idea that negative numbers should not be common in concentration. And that's everything guys, we're going to continue with the continuous flow systems for example PFR, CSTR and PBR. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.